In this video, we are going to build the ultimate portfolio to beat the average stock market gain of 10% throughout the rest of 2024. We are going to pick six stocks, all large size American companies, to show how a diverse portfolio can be built using different sectors, which gives investors a competitive advantage. Our first sector is aerospace and defense. I personally feel this sector is crucial right now. With the world seeing multiple conflicts playing out in real time, including the Russia and Ukraine conflict, which has been ongoing since 2014, but intensified in early 2022 when Putin decided Russia should invade Ukraine. We also have the ongoing issues between Israel and Iran, which seem to be getting worse by the day, which is mainly a proxy warfare issue, but has the potential to become a regional conflict. Bearing all this in mind, we will be picking between Lockheed Martin and Boeing for our first spot in the portfolio. If we first compare the market capitalization of both companies, Lockheed has a valuation of $110 billion, whilst Boeing has a market valuation of $105 billion. Lockheed Martin has shown a solid performance with a 3.5% increase in net sales to $16.2 billion in the first quarter of the year. Its net earnings and earnings per share also saw increases of 7% and 7.9%. In contrast, Boeing's financials have been struggling, with a 10% year-over-year decline in total revenue to $15.2 billion and significant negative news stories recently, with a whistleblower coming out, saying the company was releasing defective aeroplanes into public use, compromising safety. Taking all this into account and the fact we are looking to build a safe portfolio, we are going to add Lockheed Martin as our first stock today. For our next stock, we will look at the consumer goods sector, which is classified as products used by consumers in their daily lives. This includes a broad range of goods, such as food, beverages, household and personal care products, and tobacco. Companies within this sector are known for their stability because the demand for these products tends to be consistent regardless of economic conditions. For this sector, we are going to look at two heavyweight stocks in Costco and Coca-Cola. If we dig into the data, we can see Costco have reported net sales of $56.7 billion, marking a 6.1% increase from the previous year. Earnings per share increased to $3.58 from $3.07. This represents a significant increase, indicating strong profit growth and operational efficiency during the period. The rise in earnings per share is a positive signal for investors, reflecting Costco's ability to enhance shareholder value through increased profitability. The company also announced a special cash dividend of $15 per share, indicating confidence in ongoing cash flows and financial health. Whilst Coca-Cola Net revenues grew 3% year-over-year, but operating income declined 36% to $0.74 cent per share due to certain costs. And lastly, earnings per share increased to $2.47 from $2.25 the previous year. Whilst both companies have performed brilliantly for shareholders recently, and either would be a great fit for our portfolio to see growth in 2024, we have to pick Costco due to the confidence gained from paying a special dividend. Companies only do this when they are thriving. Let me know in the comments which would you have chosen, Costco or Coca-Cola. I know this will be a highly divisive subject. For our third stock, we are going to search the financial sector to see which stock we should pick for our next leg of our portfolio. This sector includes a wide range of financial services beyond banks such as insurance companies, investment funds, and real estate firms. However, banks are a central component of this sector, providing essential services like savings and checking accounts, loans, and credit facilities. Our two stocks we are going to choose from are Visa and MasterCard. When comparing the recent financial performances of Visa and MasterCard, both companies show strong results, but there are some distinctions that will influence our investment decision. Visa has shown a substantial annual growth with its stock up 22.12% over the past year. 
the company benefits from its extensive global network and a dominant market share in electronic payments, boasting a 52% market share by purchase volume. Visa's widespread acceptance and strategic partnerships with financial institutions contribute to its robust financial performance and market dominance. MasterCard, while also showing impressive growth, has a stock increase of 16.16% over the past year. MasterCard is noted for its innovative approach to payment technology and strategic partnerships that enhance its market position. Although it holds a smaller market share than Visa, with 24% by purchase volume, it's recognized for its resilience and strength in the financial sector. MasterCard has historically demonstrated impressive long-term performance, with growth of 3,176% since January 2009 compared to Visa's 2,195% gain. Both companies are leaders in the global payment technology sector and they consistently show strong earnings growth driven by the expansion of digital payments worldwide. Taking all this into account, due to Visa holding a bigger market share, I feel this stock deserves a place in our portfolio as a relatively safe pick for our financial sector stock allocation. Once again, let me know in the comments whether you agree with this stock selection, as it was a difficult choice for me to make. We now move on to have a look at the technology sector, and this might be a controversial moment, our two stocks in focus here are NVIDIA, a traditional technology company, and Tesla, who many would not class as technology, but with the AI and full self-driving aspect of their business model, I feel should be treated as a tech company. When comparing the investment potential of NVIDIA and Tesla, based on their most recent financial data, several factors stand out. NVIDIA reported an impressive revenue of $22.1 billion in quarter 4, 2024, marking a significant increase from the previous year. The company's data center revenue, a key growth driver, was particularly strong at $18.4 billion for the quarter. Net income for 2024 was $32.3 billion, showing a substantial increase year over year whilst diluted earnings per share for the fiscal year stood at $12.96, reflecting strong profitability and effective management of expenses. The company's outlook remains positive, with expected revenue of $24 billion for quarter 1, 2025, whereas at Tesla, the operating margin narrowed significantly, dropping to 5.5% in the first three months from 11.4% a year earlier. Net income of $1.1 billion for the January to March period, down 55% from the year prior. Revenue fell 9% year over year to $21.3 billion, reflecting a decline in both vehicle prices and deliveries. Tesla is in a more precarious place than it has been in years, with its vehicle sales falling, demand cooling for electric vehicles industry-wide, and Musk's placing greater emphasis on developing a fully autonomous car, a project many investors view as risky. For all the obvious reasons, we have picked NVIDIA as the safe option, with extraordinary revenue forecast for quarter 1, 2025. This stock is an easy choice, but if Tesla can scale up full, self-driving to the masses then this may be seen as a mistake in the future. Let what are your thoughts on this choice in the comments, and also let me know your opinion on what is happening at Tesla at the moment. For stock number five, we are going to look at picking a pharmaceutical stock. The options are either Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson, who are two big hitters in this ever-evolving sector, which came into the glare of public spotlight during the COVID-19 pandemic. Pfizer's recent financial performance saw a significant decrease in its year-over-year -year revenue, with total revenues for 2023 at $58.5 billion, which is a massive 42% decline from 2022. This drop was largely due to a decrease in COVID-19 vaccine sales, which had bolstered their revenues in the previous years. Pfizer expects revenues for 2024 to range between $58.5 billion and $61.5 billion, respectively. This forecast suggests stabilization without significant growth, which you would usually expect after a large decline. 
whilst at Johnson & Johnson, they reported first quarter 2024 sales of $21.4 billion, which is a 2.3% increase year over year. The company's operational growth was 3.9%, with an adjusted operational growth of 4%. Excluding the impact of their COVID-19 vaccine, the adjusted operational growth was even higher at 7.7%. The business has a diversified portfolio, not just in pharmaceuticals, but also in medical devices and consumer health products. This diversification offers a balanced revenue stream, which can be a safer bet during market fluctuations. Considering we are looking at stocks from the basis of a safe, long-term perspective, we simply have to choose Johnson & Johnson after hearing that Pfizer revenue for 2024 is looking to stabilize rather than grow. And Johnson & Johnson also have fantastic operational growth, which signals good management of the company, which is one of the most important aspects to consider when building a risk-averse portfolio. We are now on our final stock. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button to support my channel. The sector we look at now is materials, as I feel we need a gold producer in our portfolio. The price of gold recently hit all-time high, and I believe this is a great opportunity for investors. We once again have two choices, Newmont Corporation or Barrick Gold. Newmont is not only a leading gold producer, but also holds significant mining operations for copper, silver, zinc, and lead. It is recognized for its substantial global presence, operating mines in North and South America, Africa, and Australia. In 2022, Newmont produced a remarkable 185.3 metric tons of gold, making it the largest gold mining company globally. Barrick Gold is another giant in the gold mining industry, with key operations spread across North America, South America, Africa, and the Middle East. In 2022, Barrick Gold produced 128.8 metric tons of gold. It is known for its efficient mining practices and has been involved in significant mergers and acquisitions, which have strengthened its industry position. Both stocks are considered good buys, but Barrick Gold might offer higher capital gains potential due to its expansive operations in gold-rich regions in Africa, which will have better profit margins due to low operational costs, less red tape in regards to regulations, and higher growth rates in revenue and earnings. This analysis suggests Barrick Gold would be a more favorable addition to your portfolio. As we seek growth in our final stock, the first five stocks we picked are very solid companies. With no risk, mining in general comes with risk as the profit margins are tied to commodity prices which are constantly fluctuating, and we have jurisdiction risk of mining in Africa, where security can be a major headache. But this feels like a great risk-reward. Play considering that the price of gold has risen astronomically in recent months. Now we have our entire portfolio created, using one stock from every major sector across the American stock market. Let me know in the comments which stock you would have added to the portfolio and why.